anytime soon. Uh, pretty strong support at about 123. Even the highest we've been on this cross the last uh, week or so has been about 123.70 ish there. We just tucked under that 123 uh, two thirds or so. No change in expectations for a Bank of Japan interest rate hike, which many economists expect to come as soon as August, but uh, uh, definitely not before the upper house elections. July data this morning showed Japanese exports grew more than expected in May, up 15.1 percent on year. Brisk exports to the rest of Asia and Europe made up for weaker shipments to uh, the U.S. There's also uh, ongoing attention on the uh, on sterling pound. Bank of England minutes from the June meeting showed that Governor uh, Mervyn King and three other policy board members were opposed to keeping the key rate at 5.5%. Traders say that suggests the BOE may push rates higher as early as next month. And one of the reasons why we had cable... Uh, seeing a fair bit of action overnight as, uh, along with uh, the Swedish Krona for similar reasons. We had a hike by the Swedish Central Bank and also hints there could be more to come. Over in the uh, oil pits, quick price check for you. Front month July, NYMEX on your screen there along with uh, Brent up top. NYMEX first up 3 cents, 68.89. Brent up 23 cents, $70.65 a, a barrel. In New York, prices though ended nearly a dollar lower after weekly Inventory data showed a bigger than expected build in crude stocks. The EIA reported crude stockpiles rose 6.9 million barrels last week, highest in nine years. Gasoline stocks also rose by a bigger than expected 1.8 million barrels, helping to push gasoline prices lower. Gasoline futures on your screen right now. Slightly softer, $2.2253. Now, analysts are saying the next big M&A wave is going to be in the Asian telco sector. We'll find out what the likely targets are going to be, or could be rather, next in Opportunity Calls. Don't go away. Gainers is brought to you by Clarendon Loy. Top Gainers was brought to you by Clarendon Loy. On the southernmost tip of Malaysia, just across from Singapore, a vibrant new metropolis is born. Backed by a far-reaching government commitment, the Iskandar Development Region is providing new opportunities for business, trade and investment. Geographically, you look at it, it is really the hub of Southeast Asia. It will become unavoidably the catalyst for a lot of development. A fully integrated commercial, residential, technology, leisure and education zone with affordable land, skilled labour and numerous investor incentives. The IDR is expected to attract more than $100 billion of investment over the next 20 years. Some compare its potential to the success of Shenzhen and Hong Kong. What the Malaysians are trying to do with IDR is to build a zone which is much bigger and which is frankly an expansion of Singapore itself. I think that's quite unique. A strategic location, exceptional connectivity. Iskandar Development Region. Larry Kudlow is right. With an inside look at today's markets on America. Get ready. We're going to try and create some value and some wealth. Kudlow and Company, Tuesdays to Saturdays. On the next Capital Connection, Europe's leaders gather in Brussels to discuss the future of the EU Constitution. We'll get perspective on whether the new down treaty will get the green light. Plus the advertising industry's biggest get together. CNBC will be live in Cannes for Lions International Ad Festival. Stay with us. Thursday morning, you're back with us on CNBC's Cash Flow. Of course, as you can see, we're down here live at Communication. Now, the Asian telco industry is booming. The region had a billion mobile subscribers at the, as at the end of last year. And Ernst & Young expects that number to continue to surge. 
Industry insiders expect more M&A activity on soaring valuations. Pyramid Research, for one, says cash-rich telcos in Japan, Singapore, and Korea are going to snap up other emerging market players. Mark Epstein is senior analyst at Pyramid Research. He joins us from our studios up in Hong Kong. Now, Mark, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Mark, I'll ask you here, I mean, we were just saying, I was just saying a couple of seconds ago that, uh, you know, cash rich telcos, Japan, Singapore, Korea are going to be the ones uh, doing the buying. But is that necessarily the case? What about foreign telcos? I mean, they must see opportunity as well. You know, that, that's absolutely right. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest from private equity groups in the Middle East, um, in Russia, um, and also to some extent European operators. Uh, Telenor from Norway, France Telecom and Vodafone are also uh, very viable buyers of uh, emerging market telcos in Asia Pacific. All right, and what are the big drivers of, uh, I mean, what's the attraction uh, in terms of valuations? Uh, they have been uh, looking pretty strong, have they not? Well, I think that's true, and, and I think one of the reasons is that there are um, increasingly fewer and fewer opportunities out there for these operators. Um, for example, there's a, a privatization coming up in, in Vietnam uh, in 2008, and that's attracted the attention of over 30 bidders. Um, and when you have so many people in the market, uh, prices are going to be pushed up. All right, and is the attention mostly going to be on uh, mobile players? Because, I mean, this is, uh, I guess, uh, where really the growth is. Right. I mean, with the exception of perhaps China, growth in, in the fixed market is, is fairly stagnant in these uh, emerging markets because it's just so much cheaper to deploy mobile service. Hmm. Okay. We were just uh, showing viewers a chart there. Uh, Vietnam and India right at the top of that. And we were talking to somebody yesterday who was saying that, look, in terms of uh, uh, subgrowth, off a low base admittedly, but India and Vietnam, that is where things are red hot. You mentioned uh, privatization coming up in Vietnam. What are the prospects like uh, over in India, though? Well, I mean, the prospects in India are perhaps even greater, particularly in terms of scale. We're still adding 5 million mobile subscribers a month. Um, penetration closed 2006 at only 13 percent, one of the lowest in the region. Um, but we are seeing a lot of big consolidation by big players. And so if someone wants to come into the Indian market, they're going to have to lay out uh, billions and billions of dollars, as we saw with the uh, Vodafone Hutchison deal. All right. So what we're talking about here is not so much uh, uh, you, you're going to be hard pressed to find value. Uh, if you can find an opportunity, that, that's good enough. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Hmm. Okay. What are some of the uh, other other drivers uh, here? I mean, uh, these deals, how likely are they to be uh, leveraged with, with a lot of debt uh, in them? Or, or uh, are, are a lot of these established telcos uh, cashed up and just ready to spend? Um, I think that we're going to see, uh, for example, in Vietnam, uh, a direct private placement. Um, so I don't necessarily think that they're going to be very leveraged given how cash rich some of these operators are. Okay, and just real quickly, Mark, before you go, you mentioned uh, private equity just uh, up top when we uh, came to you. Are these fellas, I mean, they've got billions of dollars uh, in store ready and needed to be uh, deployed. Uh, I mean, these guys are going to be tough competition for the telcos. They are going to be tough competition, but I think that what we've really seen is that in the end, the operators actually have the uh, experience uh, dealing uh, with these kind of businesses. They understand the, the subscriber demographic services, so I would still um, consider them to be more likely bidders. Okay, Mark, useful. Good to talk to you, sir. Just out of time. Mark Einstein there, senior analyst at uh, Pyramid Research from our studios live up in uh, Hong Kong. All right, let's get to our question of the day, which is this. Which telco in Asia is in the best position to buy a rival? Send us your thoughts now at our website, asia.cnbc.com. And a quick heads up, we've uh, got an SMS alert service.